Hello everyone. Last week, we talked about the story of the Zandalari. But one amongst them in particular has set quite a lot of things in motion and will have his part to play in the next expansion. This is of course Prophet Zul. So today, we're going to talk about his part in the storyline, what do we know about him and what might actually happen. Now let's start things off with an introduction from Lorewalker Cho. It is said the God King Rastakan, ruler of the Zandalari, lords over his mighty kingdom from a throne carved of solid gold. Years ago, as he sat upon this opulent seat of power, he was visited by the dark prophet Zul. Zul warned King Rastakan of a terrible cataclysm, for Zul had seen a vision of the great armored dragon clenching the world in his ferocious jaws. King Rastakan did nothing. Months later, Zul returned, bearing more grim news from his visions. He saw a legion of serpents pouring forth from a gaping fissure that tore open the floor of the ocean. Still, King Rastakan did nothing. Finally, mere months before the cataclysm, Zul returned, tearing his clothes and throwing his staff to the ground, Zul spoke of earthquakes and tidal waves. He described the golden capital of Zandalar, slowly sinking beneath the waves in the aftermath of the cataclysm. Its once great people drowning as their mighty work slipped forever beneath the sea. King Rastakan tired of Zul and his troubling nightmares. To be rid of the Prophet, he granted Zul the use of his largest ships so that he and his followers could seek a new land if his visions came to pass. And his visions did come to pass. When Deathwing rose from the Maelstrom, dark, angry waves crashed into the Zandalari capital. The spine of the land broke in two, and soon the city and all its riches began to slide into the hungry sea. The Zandalari people turned to their king for help, but there was only one Zandalari equipped to help them, the Prophet Zul. The Prophet and the mighty war fleet he had assembled while his king sat idle. You see, the true power of kings and emperors stems from the power to aid their people. The moment they fail, they cede their power to the one who can. And so it was that Zul's dark visions earned him a fleet and an army to accompany it. Now, not a lot is actually known about his youth. Most we learn is from scrolls and logs found on the Isle of Thunder. He is part of the Zanchuli Council, those that have the ear of the king and hold incredible power and forbidden knowledge. He is one of the most respected. Even as a child, his dark and terrible visions, they had come true to the last horrifying detail. He commanded fear and respect as one of the dark prophets, seers capable of witnessing great tragedies before they came to pass. He saw the cataclysm coming and he was convinced that the Zandalari home lands would be destroyed in the coming apocalypse. He advised the council and king to unite with the other troll tribes and to abandon their doomed homelands. But despite his infamy, the council refused to believe in the scope of the disaster that was to come. Many felt that Zul was grandstanding to increase his own status and power. They scoffed as he and his followers began assembling a war fleet and reaching out to the lesser troll races. But Zul's visions were visions of the truth. Deathwing's cataclysm, it rocked Zandalar to his foundations. Even now, the mighty and enigmatic troll empire, it slides inexorably into the sea, and Zandalari peasants and warriors alike, they flock to Zul for guidance on what to do next. It's in an item-bound Zandalari journal, where we read about one of the trolls that joined Zul on his mission. I never liked soothsayers, especially never liked the dark ones. Those eyes all sunken, telling me things I don't want to hear, but no will come true. And Zul, he was the worst of them. Worst because he always saw the worst things. Worst because there's never anything you could do to stop it. When King Rastakan ordered me to join Zul's fleet, I thought I'd done something to offend the council. I thought he was sacrificing me and the others just to get Zul off his back and away from Zandalar. I cursed my luck, ferrying that old prophet all around the oceans, meeting with those disgusting sand fury trolls or the Grace Drakari. 
that was weeks ago. Before I heard what happened to the capital. I see now why the spirit sent me here. We Zandalari. We got to find new home. And Zu was the only one looking. Zu and his cursed, cursed eyes. Can you see a future for us, Dark Prophets? What now, old troll? What now? What exactly happened to the capital? Well, a waterlogged Zandalari journal that tells us... I can still see it. I still remember how I felt when I laid eyes on it. Blinking to wake up. Telling myself I was already awake. The grey palace, listing to one side, like a drunk hunched against a wall, still gleaming and gold. Was Rastakan still inside? King of a crooked throne. The morning sun, glimmering off the seawater that crept into the forum. Pretty, but for the jagged fissure tearing up the tile. We thought that was the worst of it. But the cataclysm had only begun. Water up a foot by the next evening. A week later, high tide came up to the market awnings. Still the sun shone, like the world was saying it was sorry. Sorry to take your home, sorry to give it to the sea. World, don't get off that easy. That's a lot of damage done to the home of the Zandalari. And Zul's visions, they led him to uniting the separate troll tribes, all of them facing trouble and hardships in their own rights, unite them into a single mighty empire and prevent the extinction of their race. Our kind faces extinction. Trolls once ruled the mightiest empire this world has ever seen. Yet look at you now. Zuldrak has already fallen to the scourge. Its gods consumed as death descended on its people. Zulfarak, once the shining jewel of Tanaris, is now nothing but a wasteland. Divided, you are weak. But we, Zandalari, can offer you a future undreamed of. Jindo, the Gurubashi, would you see the greatness of Zul Guru restored? Join us, and the Zandalari will make it so. The Kara of the Amani, summon your followers to Zul Aman. Together, we will make Zul Jin's murderers weep for mercy. Brothers! Hear us now! We, Zandalari, have returned to reclaim the former glory of our people. To see trolls retake the lands that are rightfully ours. And to crush any foolish enough to stand in our way. From the wreckage of the Cataclysm, the Troll Empire will rise again! Vol'jin of the Dark Spear, you would turn your back on your own people? The Horde is my people. If it be war you bring, then I stand against you. So be it, Dark Spear. But against the powers we'll soon unleash, none shall stand. For long. Things seem to be pretty dire if the Zandalari are actually willing to bargain with the powers of Akar, considering all the trouble that they had in the past of taking care of him, not once but twice. The second time, they even allied with the Alliance and Horde to get it done, which offered us a raid during Classic. But now we see Vol'jin of the Dark Spear tribe who's stepping away. The Horde is his people, and he sets out to warn both factions of this threat, giving us a chance to retaliate. Now this video is the story of Prophet Zul, but the Prophet, he preferred to stay in the background and manipulate events, twist them to his own design to achieve his goals. In the now dungeon, Zul Group, as well as the questing experience within Strangleforn Vale, we discover the story of what went down in Zul Group and that Jindo is back. When he was defeated during Classic, his spirit was ripped from this world. He survived as a shade, weak and broken, but he always had power over the spirits, and one by one, he broke them to his will. With each soul devoured, he got closer and closer to ripping a hole back into the world. Adventurers, they made a little bit of a mistake while questing through Strangford Vale. They find a little Lashtail hatchling, befriend and feed it, until the raptor finds a skull from a troll skull pile. We return it to the gnome Osborne Abnoticus, who sees no harm in trying to bring it back to life 
What's the worst that can happen? So we gather some juju voodoo mojo nonsense, a body, specifically Gonzula, chief of the blood scalps, and with a bit of electricity, we get things started. Whoopsie daisy. Turns out that this is actually Bloodlord Mendekir, also one of the original bosses in Zul Group, and we gave him a brand new body. As a way to say thank you, he won't kill us on the spot, instead he actually makes us a deal. He'll need a replacement for his old raptor Ogan, so he wants our little cute one, and with no other option, we hand it over. This then leads into discovering more about what is going down in Zul Group. Jindo recruits Zanzil the Outcast to resurrect High Priestess Jacklick and High Priest Phenoxus. And what's interesting is that it's actually a Zandalari troll that helps us out with trying to put a stop to all of this. Mei Wiki was part of the crew that allied with us during Classic. And it makes you wonder if the Zandalari back home, if they were actually aware of what Zul was doing here, or if the Zandalari was just working on her own. Either way, we were able to prevent Zanzil from resurrecting Jacklick, priestess of Herik the Bat, but Vanoxus, high priest of Hattis the Snake, he was brought back and turned into a slave of Akar once again. The final high priestess is one that showed up on their own accord. This is High Priestess Kilnara. Now, when High Priestess Arlok was killed in Classic, the Panferloa Bethic chose her sister, Kilnara, as her new mortal champion, where her sister used to stand. That is where we find the priestess lost in grief. And when the Zandalari pledged to aid the Gurubashi in reaching their former greatness, the Gurubashi struck out at Stranglethorn. With Vol'jin and the Dark Spears, we retaliated. We cleansed the city that has only seen death and hatred for years. With at the end, we had Jindo waiting for us. Now going by the title The Godbreaker, it appears that it's time as a spirit, it has changed his mindset about serving Hakar. Instead, he now enslaved the Loa of Blood. Your deceit is unforgivable, Jindo. You spit in the face of a god. One must be careful when trying to subdue a force such as Hakar. So we break its chains and we let the Loa do its thing. You overstepped your bounds, Jindo. You toy powers that are beyond you. Have you forgotten who I am? Have you forgotten what I can do? The Godbreaker has become the Broken. And perhaps it's time for the jungle to retake Zulgarup and watch the scent of death from this place. Meanwhile, over at Zulaman, we find Vol'jin standing outside with Haldron Brightwing and Verisa Windrunner. Lorfmar is not exactly happy with Verisa being back in her lands, but Haldron, he made the call and he is in need of their aid. Vol'jin explains how King Rastakan is planning to unite the troll tribes under his Zandalari. He is calling Volt and his brother, but the Horde are his true brothers. We have to stop him before he can sweet talk the others into joining his empire. While the events inside of Zulaman, they're pretty much unchanged with some minor alterations. We still go in and we take care of the trolls that have the essence of their mighty troll animal god sealed inside of them, sealed by none other than Hex Lord Malakras. We still save the prisoners before they're sacrificed, earning a new variation of the Bear Mount, while some additional Zandalari, they support the Imani trolls. It's the Kara that's been appointed to take over from the former leader Zul'jin, and he believes that with the aid of the Zandalari, they'll finally be able to succeed where Zul'jin had failed, succeed in restoring the Empire to its former glory. Oh now, everybody tried to keep the Imani Empire down. Now, we got friends. We with the Zandalari now. We part of something bigger. You can't stop us all. The whole world going to drown in blood. <laughs> the Zandalari give us straight. Nobody push around the Amani no more. But of course, we were able to stop all of them. We set the sealed Loa free, and we have a little celebration with Vol'jin and the troops that supported us. Zul's plans and visions during the Cataclysm, they were prevented. But with Mr. Panoria, the mist around the land disappearing, they set their eyes on reclaiming the land of their ancient old ally, the Mogu, and the Thunder King. Step one in their plan was to actually resurrect the Thunder King, who was, as you might remember from last week, enshrined within the tomb of the Conquerors. Together with Lore Walker Cho, we slowly but surely uncover what the Mogu and the now Zandalari allies are after. But by the time they were pieced all together, it's already too late. Under Kun Lai, thunder sleeps. The storm long spent their rests. 
but blood of brother kingdom keeps alive the dispossessed. By Zandalari blood, he will be taken. To Zandalari voice, he will awaken. <laughs> Secure the remains, brothers. The Thunder King shall live again. The trolls with the wicked dance moves, they secure the remains and a blood revealed map taken as we fly the way out of the tomb. It tells us that they've taken the remains to a tiny fishing village called Sauchin. By the time that we get there, the Zandalari trolls and their allies, they're already out in force. The little village has no chance on its own, so we help them out and in return, they'll help us with locating Prophet Karzu, Drakhari, Gurubashi, Amani and Zandalari. All of them are trying their best to invade, but we're able to rally the village, we supply it with weaponry, and we back it up with enough force to save the village. We're even able to take one of the trolls prisoner, but he doesn't say exactly what we want to hear. <sighs> Rotten. <laughs> you are too late. The remains of the Thunder King were taken to the Isle of Reckoning. We performed the ancient rite. <laughs> Even now, the true Emperor of Pandaria lives and breathes once more. Woe to the Pandaran usurpers! <coughs> the Mogu will rule this land again, and we Zandalari will have a new homeland. They've finally been able to resurrect the Thunder King, and while that is a great blow, we can't dwell on this setback. Prophet Karzu still needs to be dealt with, so we fly out to the Owl and we confront the prophets. We need this land! The Cataclysm destroyed our home! Next time that we see the Zandalari pop up, that is within the Mogushan vaults, led by Garajal the Spirit Binder, they're trying to crack open this throve of ancient mystery and bring back whatever arcane power and knowledge that they can find. No matter. We don't be needing what's back that way anyhow. He was actually present during the resurrection of Lei Shen and gifted with dark talents surrounded by loyal Zandalari mystics. He is broken through the outer walls and will not rest until the vaults belong to him. Let's make sure that that doesn't happen. Bah! Bested by the likes of you. What a shame for a Zandalari priest to endure. But it ain't no thing. Take your trinkets. You'll be needing them. I be going now. Time to find a new home for my soul. We prevented the Zandalari from gaining access to the vault, as well as cleaning up the place and making sure that nobody else could use it for the dark schemes. But of course, at this point in time, we still had the Thunder King to deal with. Gather heroes. Sound the drums. The Thunder King comes. The Thunder King comes. On the Isle of Thunder, where the Zandalari and the Mogu is set up base. The Alliance and Horde, they moved out to take care of business, but also fighting with each other. We eventually managed to knock down the doors and gain entry into the Throne of Thunder, where pretty much the last massive stand of this Zandalari allegiance with the other trolls takes place. Horadon, a massive dire horn, is let loose upon the adventurers, while Faraki, Gurubashi, Drakari, Amani and Zandalari they try to take us out. Not even War God Jalak, the master of Horadon, is able to put a stop to us. Well, after our victory, we discover that Garajal has made good on his promise and he returned as a spirit. He used his new form to empower the Council of Elders, representatives of the Drakari, the Faraki, the Amani, and the Gurubashi. Karstrajin has taken over from the Kara and now leaves the Amani. Zul the Sandcrawler is representing Zul Farak and the Faraki tribe. Frosky Malak is there for the Frost Trolls, representing the Drakari, and probably the most interesting one, that is High Priestess Marley, who is representing the Guru Bashi. You might remember us taking care of her within Classic Zoo Group, as she embodied the Spider Lower Shadra, but some way, somehow, perhaps because of Jindo as well, she has come back. All the same, the last stand for a new, unstoppable empire that is crushed, while the fate of Harajal is unknown. Not even the forces of the Thunder King, Leishan himself, nor Kipara, were able to hold us down, and the plans of Prophet Zul and the Zandalari, the plans of claiming Pandaria for themselves as their homeland, they were destroyed. Zul's plans were prevented, or were they?
up to now, I've explained the major things that Prophet Zul has done in the storyline so far. But Battle for Azeroth Alpha, it reveals a little bit more. Of course, this is future expansion stuff, and I can completely understand if you don't want to spoil it. So be warned, spoilers ahead for those curious and sticking around. With Battle for Azeroth, Prophet Zul is getting a much larger part in the storyline, as he's right there at the start, when the Hordes dare send out to reclaim precious cargo that was lost. This cargo found its way to the Alliance stockades. The details as to how and what, they're not fully explained. All we know for certain is that Zul, together with Princess Talanji, they're imprisoned and we break them out. He also gives us a demonstration of his awesome power by predicting exactly what we should and shouldn't do to get ourselves out of Stormwind. He's even able to leave her behind in flames as we set sail for Zandalar to meet with King Rastakan. We're going to earn their trust and get the Zandalari to be our new allies. In order of King Rastakan, we help our Prophet Zul at Talgurup to deal with a mess of his own making. One of his pupils, a witch doctor by the name of Oljamba, he's taken the Kurubashi enclave as his own and he ousted their guards. We need to reclaim the area. But before we do, before we take care of this wayward pupil, Voljamba has an interesting prophecy to share. He has seen golden sails that mark the final coming. The manipulator seeks to break the seal. Buffeted by a current of lies, the high throne will be unmoved. It too will be crushed beneath the wheel. Shadows twist the strings of fate, bending the empire to its will. In the end, even the great king will be made to kneel. We also get to see Zul's power in action again, as he is able to predict exactly how our confrontation with Fuljamba is going to go down, and what we need to do to take out the seer. His sight is extremely powerful. While taking out his student, it does show us that someone with the vision, they're not exactly unbeatable. Now back in Zulazar, we're asked to hand out the word of Zul, which says, Faithful servant, I have returned as promised. The time has come to recall our brothers and sisters that sailed with me into exile during the cataclysm. The time has come to once again unite us on the Lari under a single banner. You each have your tasks. See to them. Your prophet Zul. Oh, and as for you, player, know that I foresaw you reading this. We hand a note to three different trolls. There's Doomsayer Volkini, a Zul loyalist who believes that we need a true leader, not a feeble king. When we ask her, when she last spoke with Zul, she says years ago, when he returned with our fleet from exile. He described his vision of this day, when the world would bleed, and he described us in great detail. That means that Zul foresaw Sargeras stab in the world, but I'm actually confused about the exile part. We'll get to that in a little bit. Volkini runs off to let the others know, though still faithful to Zul, they must know. Duckmaster Kobo, he scoffs at Zul's visions. Did he tell you about the time that he predicted Zandalar would sink beneath the waves? He was wrong. Oh, there was damage, but Zul fled with our fleet and started a few wars. Those of us who stayed, endured. We rebuilt, because that is what it means to be a Zandalari. I love that they actually acknowledge the story from Lord Walker Cho. The visions from the scrolls and Zandalar not being lost beneath the waves. The final troll that we showed a message to, that is Nokali Discard, who's been saving a special messenger beast since the Thunder King rose. It would seem its day has finally arrived as Nalukana flies off to send a message. As it turns out, working with Zul and doing his dirty work, that was quite a mistake on our part, as I assume that this message, it calls for Zul's Mogul allies, with Warlord Kao and Vilnak Dor leading the troops. They are characters from the novel Shadows of the Horde, which was mainly set up about Vol'jin fighting himself again, reconnecting with the Darkspear role within the Horde, before returning for the Darkspear Rebellion. The Zandalari actually invited him to join them, but he stuck with the Horde and he protected Pandaria from their threats. Here they make a return to join Zul Zul in his coop of trying to replace Rastakan as the king. Luckily, the guards are able to save Rastakan's life. The horde is able to save the city, and we work on preventing Zul's plans. This leads us through the Temple of the Prophets, where we can read more words from Zul, figure out what his travels through Azeroth have actually taught him. The word of Zul number three. Followers hear me. If our king Rastakan be of no use, and his god Razan be of no use, then it falls to us to replace them. High atop Mount Mugamba is an ancient city, a tall Dazar, the sacred resting place of dead kings. There we shall find a true king. Dazar, with the power I wield, we shall return Dazar to his seat of glory as king of Zandalar. The word of Zul number two. Followers hear me. When I journeyed to Pandaria, we attempted an ancient and forbidden ritual. We awakened Lei Shen, the Thunder King of the Mogu, who'd been dead for many ages of this world. In doing so, I learned the ancient ways to return an ancient king to life 
and learns how to control them. The word of Zul number one. Followers hear me. I have journeyed far in these last few years and learned much. I witnessed the Drakari, proud empire of the north, fall to the might of the undead scourge. As they fell, they consumed their gods in near forgotten rituals, stealing untold amounts of power to be used for their own purposes. The power of the Drakari is actually used by Zul's ally Yasma to consume the Spider Loa, and he is going for Atal Dazar and eventually King's Rest, where Dazar, the first king of the Zandalari, he's been put to rest. They want to resurrect him, like they've done with Leisha and the Thunder King. And it's interesting that Zul mentions that he learned how to control them. Does he mean, like, mind control? Because that would put a whole new spin on the events of Mr. Pandaria. Or does he mean in a way of manipulation? Either way, for the resurrection, he is going to need the blood of Razan, the Loa of Kings. And wouldn't you know it, we play right into his hands and we give him what he wants. His allies are going to try and stop us in Atal Dazar. We're going to take care of the Zar the First King, who's been dominated by Zul's dark magic. And then it seems like Zul has even bigger dreams, but this is mainly from data mine information. His student Voljamba. He saw the manipulator seeking to break the seal. The high throne will be unmoved. It too will be crushed beneath the wheel. That seal bit that connects to Gahun, the ray boss located in Nashmir, and a lot of Zul's allies, the blood trolls and all that, they invoke its name as they fight with us. It appears that Zul is interested in releasing Gahun, finding that final seal, which some connect to the turning wheel that we see at Zul Dazar. Which means, potentially, the final seal is actually located within the capital city. Voldun, the last zone not available for testing right now. It appears to have Zul coming back to seize the city. They sense something coming from the west. An ancient power of the Black Empire. A god killer, as they call it. And that empire was the old gods ruling the world before the titans brought order. The name Mithrax the Unraveler has been mentioned. It has risen, and Zul is apparently commanding it to break the final seal. Talanji already rides the Loa into battle. Brothers and sisters of Zandalar, let's take back our city. So that is pretty much the story of Prophet Zul as we know it right now. Yet there are quite a couple of the pieces of the puzzle that is missing when it comes to his story. How exactly did he team up with Princess Talanji and how did they end up in the stockades? Why do several sources mention that he was exiled when other sources state that the fleet was given to him? When exactly did he come up with a plan of releasing Gahun? Is that the reason why there's such a massive change in his model between the Cataclysm and Battle for Azeroth? Could there perhaps even be a potential link between Gahun and Hakar? Is, is that where this connection was built up on in, in Cataclysm? I do wonder if the visions that he had and all the plans that he came up with, if they were actually wrong, or if we once again played right into his hands. They even laugh at Zul for claiming Zandalar to be taken by the sea. But for all we know, he simply could have lied to convince the king to give him those ships. He then sets out to unite the troll tribes, and from Shadows of the Horde we learned that it was indeed an order of King Rastakhan to do so. However, the things that follow, like dealing with Hakar, enslaving the Loa with the Yamani, trying to take Pandaria and learn how to resurrect the Thunder King, that could have very well been just Zul acting on his own. Imagine him foreseeing the mist disappearing around Pandaria and wanting to learn the secrets on how to resurrect an ancient king. What better way to get the trolls desperate enough to ally with him than to let them believe Zandalar is gone and that they need this new land, as well as having them feel horribly at the hands of the Alliance and the Hordes. The trolls did his dirty work, like we do in Zandalar, and they gave him access to the secrets of Leishen, claiming Mogushan vaults, you know, that would have been an extra bonus on top of all of it, but he got all that he needed to make his plans come true. It could very well be that I give Blizzard's writing a little bit too much credit, and I imagine that we are going to prevent Zul's plans again. But it would be cool if they would stretch the storyline over several different expansions. One last tidbit before we close the video is that there seems to be an allegiance between Prophet Zul and Queen Azora. Although it could be a random member of the Santruli Council, it seems to be more likely that it's actually Prophet Zul. During our questing, we find two notes which say... This letter is between Azara and someone either in or in immediate contact with the Zantuli Council. This letter makes it clear that the Naga are participating in the murky politics surfacing in Zuldazar. Most exalted Queen Azara, we have infiltrated the Zantuli Council. It was far easier than either of us expected. Half of the Council has sworn to our cause. The other half will stand or fall when the time comes. The path of resistance will soon be clear. Rastakan assumed the Sanchuli Council wanted to be in service of the people. The people don't deserve service. They are selfish, foolish, hopeless. But I digress. I will bring the Zandalari back to greatness, whatever form that may take. Your kingdom will rise. We will both rule as we were meant to do.
none will be left to oppose us. A new world order lies ahead. And then the second note, your work with the council is laudable. We do look forward to thanking you in person. It seems there were few relics to be found where you suggested. We send a new force under his guidance to find what the others missed. He is certain there is power to be found there. I am concerned that shattering the temple was not enough. The ocean is Kral's temple. However, with his followers lost, it is but a matter of time. There are plodding Tortolans everywhere these days. Fortunately, their wits are as quick as their feet. They suspect nothing of what we do. A new world order indeed. Signed, Azora. The only thing that makes me doubt that it's Zul is that it mentions infiltrating the Zanchuli Council, since the Prophet has already been a part of it. Yet at the same time, it also mentions half of the Council standing with them, something that's also repeated during the questing experience. Time will tell though how all of that is going to play out. The Siege of Zandalar, the allegiance with Azora, and by extension, I assume the Old God Nassau. Taking on a troll that has the power to see the future, and has so far been working us exactly as he predicted. I can't wait to see all of this unfold, but for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. I really really hope you enjoyed this one. As always, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed it, and until next time guys, see ya!